confession too. Mm. Mm. Uh, I mean, it, it's a. Uh, I, I, I do think we. I mean, I remember seeing Macbeth in London with Judi Dench and Ian McKellen, and it was one of the most exciting wow. evenings ever. And it was a cold night at the Donmar Theatre, outside and inside, and it, that gave it atmosphere. There are certain things, and you go along and see something else, and you think, I'll walk out in the interval. Yeah. Macbeth is, is a so sexy play, though. Let's talk about... Um, oh, there's so many. Can I live to be 100? Oh, um, this is depressing. I think it is depressing. Oh. I like to stay here and now. I don't want to live to 100. Oh, don't and say I'm that. right behind you. I don't you. even want to. My father died at 63. That'll be me gone this year. Join me, Camilla Tomini, every Sunday at 9.30 when I'll be interviewing the key players in British politics and taking them to task. And this report basically says that he's not fit to stand trial. With an upcoming election looming over Westminster, now is the time for clear, honest answers. I agree. And that's precisely what I'll get. Is he indecisive? Incompetent? That's the Camilla Tomini Show at 9.30 every Sunday on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's election channel. It's 11 o'clock. You're with GB News. I'm Polly Middlehurst in the GB Newsroom. And some breaking news this hour. William Ragg has reportedly resigned from his position as the vice chair of the 1922 committee. It follows the Tory MP claiming he had been manipulated into sharing other politicians' personal numbers as part of a Westminster sexting scam. He's since apologised, saying he felt mortified prompting the Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, to call him courageous for coming forward. Scotland Yard says it's continuing its investigation into the scam after major security concerns were raised by several members of Parliament. That news just into us. And also released to us in the last half hour, court documents have revealed that the murder suspect in the fatal stabbing of a woman in Bradford was out on bail after making threats to assault and kill her. 25-year-old Habiba Masoom is a Bangladeshi national who came to Britain on a student visa. Masoom was conditionally bailed by Manchester Magistrates Court in November, despite prosecutors objecting to his release. He had pleaded not guilty to both assault and threatening to kill at a hearing on November the 27th last year. He was ordered not to contact Miss Akhtar. Kusama Akhtar was stabbed as she pushed a baby in a pram while out shopping. The baby is unharmed. Police say they want to speak to any taxi drivers who may have driven the suspect to Bradford Moor Park and they're warning the public not to approach him but instead to call 999. Assistant Chief Constable Damien Miller spoke to news teams earlier on today. There are significant resources conducting CCTV and house-to-house -house inquiries and we also have local Bradford officers carrying out increased patrols in the area which I hope will be of some reassurance to residents. Meanwhile, the killers of 23-year-old footballer Cody Fisher have been jailed for life, with minimum terms to serve of 26 and 25 years. The semi-professional footballer was stabbed and killed during a fight on the dance floor of a Birmingham nightclub on Boxing Day in 2022. A jury at Birmingham Crown Court found 23-year-old Remy Gordon and 22-year-old Cammy Carpenter guilty of his murder. Cody Fisher's mum, Tracy, said, you never expect your child to be murdered. The sentence passed is somewhat a blessing that they are no longer on our streets and hopefully go somewhat to try and eradicate this awful epidemic that is ruining so many lives. Sadly, not all have been brought to account, but they know who they are. For us as a family, Cody will still not come home and we will forever live in the shadow of his senseless murder. Cody Fisher's mum. Now, millions turn their eyes skyward tonight as a total eclipse of the sun passed over North America. It's an extremely rare event and areas of Mexico and the United States at various points were plunged into darkness as the moon passed in front of the sun, leaving crowds in awe of the phenomena. Many parts of the UK were also hoping to see that, although for us it's a partial eclipse, but we understand heavy cloud left many keen spectators disappointed. For the latest stories, sign up to GB News Alerts, scan the QR code on the screen right now or go to gbnews.com slash alerts. Hello 
and welcome to Headline is your first look at Tuesday's newspapers. I am Simon Evans. Joining me tonight are the comedic duo who know that the first rule of Fight Club is to put photographic evidence on it on Twitter. Stroke X. It's Josh Howie and Lewis Schaefer. And we have an image of them here, courtesy of Twitter account Proper Memes. Let's have a look at that. There they are, ladies and gentlemen. That's uh, live footage from an earlier... Conf altercation. altercation, yeah. People think that we don't like each other, Josh. <laughs> yeah. And, and they also uh, just think Just stop it now. Just stop it there. That's all we have to say. I'm a little disappointed that Brad Pitt appeared in that photograph without my face transposed on... I know. That's, that would have that finished that off That would have been the killer. Proper yeah. memes, if you're watching tonight, maybe you can make that um, alteration. It. Yeah, ready yeah, and then show half. that to your wife. <laughs> First rule. So, let's have a look at the front pages. We kick off with the Daily Mail. They have a record surge in a £150,000 council fat cats. Not quite sure what that means. We'll hopefully find out shortly. The Telegraph. Children must not be rushed to transition. Take it in their own good time. Guardian. Starmer. Told to resurrect Sure Start to help the poorest. Uh, the Times, Labour set to close non-DOM loopholes. That is actually a picture of the eclipse there, not a non-DOM loophole being closed. And the Express, NHS, must end long, cruel journeys for cancer care. And finally, the Daily Star, give us a little light relief, boffs give cows the right hump. Well, those were your front pages. So let us take a look at some of those in more detail. Josh, you have The Guardian. Yeah, quite a lot of news here. We've got a picture of a bunch of geeks watching the, uh, the solar eclipse. There's news that uh, it's all a bit confusing in, in Gaza, but it seems like uh, some of Israel's forces have pulled out of uh, around Rafa and are pulling up to the north of the country in Israel. Mm -hmm. uh, so who knows what's going on there? And, uh, but the big story for me, and this is actually because I used to work there, Starmer told to resurrect Sure Start to help poorest. Uh, sure Start was an organisation started by Gordon Brown, and uh, the idea was to sort of get to families early on, uh, whilst the, 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 the children are still very young and babies and toddlers, and provide them that sort of holistic help that would carry them through. And we've seen the first results coming out that people who were part of that Sure Start program when it started and that got GCSE results this, like last year three three grades higher. So than who? Than, than people who hadn't had access. So to it that. wasn't universally available at the time? It wasn't universal. Well, no, it wasn't. They didn't catch oh, everyone. Okay. So for the people and comparing it like like for like for when yeah. the Sure Start program was finished under the Tory government. So this was what around the early two thousands then, was it? Yeah, it was early. Two yeah. So okay. Um, so it just so it's, shows... a, it's an uh, an intervention, educational or at home. It was like as well? a one stop centre, and they would send people out into homes. Right. Uh, they would identify. Like I said, I, I mean, I worked there as like a filing person. Right. Uh, but you had like a couple of families who would dominate so much of the social services and it brought a lot of this stuff under, under one roof. Right. And you'd have, like, one family who would... Like, their kids would get pregnant at 13, and then 13 mm. years later, you'd see the next part of the file continue okay. as they got pregnant again. And it broke that. And, it bro and the point was it broke that cycle, mm. and it really did make a difference to these people's lives. Or, well, what do you think, or, Lewis? Or, yeah. or... I'm not 100% sure about this. All I know is this, is if Sh Sure Start... The, the Labour was in until 2010 or something, right? Yeah. And so they had, a, they had at least 12 years of doing this thing. Where are those kids today? Well, that's what they, they just got their GCSE they, results. They did a lot they, better. But you know what? Because those kids who got started... It's every, every time you have one of these... new, It's called new project syndrome. You start a new project, the first people that go in there are totally enthusiastic, the first people who are going or working there, like yourself, are totally enthusiastic, and then later on, it just goes down the drain. Well, it went down the drain because... Toys pulled the plug on it. It would have, it would because because at some point all of these governmental. Well, it's it's now 14 years on from the end of the labour. I'd be interested to know what the numbers are. All I'm saying is 16 year olds take GCSEs, 15 and 16 year olds. So yeah. they would have to be the very last of them if they're just taking them now. But maybe they have earlier results. Yeah. I would be interested to see. I'm not. I don't want to throw cold water over it. I will say uh, there was a more famous uh, enterprise of a similar nature under Bill Clinton. I think they poured like billions, if not trillions, into it, and it had ultimately very 
disappointing results. And yeah. there does seem to be... I mean, some people say, this: if you're going to spend any money at all on yeah. state sector educational interventions, do it as early as possible, especially in families that are failing. But there is Why also a tendency ahead? for it to to uh, peter out a little bit once they get through, you know. I'm with you. I don't know. I don't know the full mm. story about this. If I had to put money on it, based on all the projects in America where yeah. they did, where they the first people, the Peace Corps, you know, millions of these projects, and they all at the end they just they go they turn into naught because ultimately, it's the government. unfortunate as it is, we all have a I think a built-in disposition either to be in favour of welfare or in favour of families taking responsibility for their own kids. But yeah. there's probably some cases that we can be presented to challenge us, but I'd like to. See, I'd I like, you're right. I'd like to see the number. And I'll tell you something else. Yeah. He mentioned something interesting about the Palestinians. This is the biggest news for for eight Well, months. we have that on oh. the. Uh, we have that coming up on the the Telegraph, I think, as well. Maybe no, no, no maybe no, not. No, no, okay. And that's the thing. This is what's amazing about British newspapers. How much non-news, non-stories are in this thing. The te the the past. What's happened is is Israel is probably acting under pressure from the world. The world has turned on Israel mm -hmm. to, to get out, and now they're getting out, but they're just not telling anybody we're getting out. No, you, you, know. don't, you don't know what's going on. They're pulling up to the north. They've been, get, they've been fired upon by Hezbollah over the last few months. Right. So it could be they're building up for an, uh, for an attack or retaliation. Mm. The we, north, don't know what, we don't know what's going on. There's also very sad, very sad news today, which is... The, the, the hostages, it turns out there's 130, but we think about they think about 30 have been killed. Mm. But it turns out that they wanted 40 immediately of the women who have basically been sexually assaulted and raped in these tunnels. Yeah. It turns out they actually have... They're saying that they don't even have 40 left alive to exchange. So if that's true, that's obviously um, incredibly depressing. But why isn't Israel keep on pounding forward? This is basically the war in Gaza is over. Well, you don't know that. I you don't, don't, we don't need, know that. We need to, it is. We you need know. to move on to the uh, the next newspaper. We have yeah. the Times. Uh, you have that one, Lewis. This is the Times. Good news. Uh, Labour set to close down a non dom loopholes. And, and so the Tories, this is in the t Times, and the Tories were closing down the non dom loopholes. non doms mm. are people like me who claim residence in other countries and hoard massive amounts of money yeah. here and lives off the largesse, the healthcare system. I just, that's a fantastic. They just basically tell everyone that they pay their tax elsewhere, right. mm. you know, and, and everyone goes, well, where exactly? And then there's... Yes, and then they don't. But the truth is, is that if you start treating them badly, they will find many other places to go to. Yeah, of course. Uh, it's Interesting. I mean, Tories, uh, people said they had stolen Labour's clothes with their non-DOM stuff, mm. so Labour is trying to emphasise that there are still yeah. loopholes, I guess. There are some, still some loopholes. I say yeah. that should raise enough to uh, to pay for some of the things that they want to put through when mm. when and if they the come start. into government. Well, a short start. <laughs> but other things, no, dealing with the NHS, paying for um, breakfast clubs for primary school ch children. Mm. Uh, so... Uh, but yes, it, it's like any time Labour says anything, uh, then the Tories go, "Oh, well, that's quite a good idea. We'll we'll do that." Well, they've had that for a while. It's interesting that two new Tory uh, Labour policies announced on two consecutive newspapers, one for the left and the right, mm. as if they're starting to sort of warm up a little bit now towards possibly making out their actual promises and separating the sort of general yeah. vibe from. But specifics. making a promise mm. is not. No, generally of news. Course. No, no, it, it's not generally news, and that's the oh, thing. Oh, it will be in an election, yeah. In an election, mm. but you know, we're saying we're, we're we might do now. this. The truth is, what is news? News is war is over, war begins, there's an election, there's an earthquake, there's a... There's a there's Can a, we have a look at the Telegraph, Josh? Oh, right, we yes, have... Uh, um, uh, so what you were saying earlier, the, there's council staff earning more than £100,000 mm. now at nine-year high. So obviously Tories came in and there was this whole austerity and it was going to be cutting down on all these wages, and now it's seems to have crept back, certainly amongst the council leaders who are now earning some, some proper big bucks. Yeah. Uh, so that's... And I think people feel... Um, I mean, well, let's make, just make it clear I'm speaking from my own personal yeah. experience, but council tax is... A, is have gone up ...is brutal. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's high because Council we're already, services have gone down. We're already in a very high tax regime, mm. the highest for 70 years, depending on exactly how much you're earning and so on, and, and then council tax comes around the back and, and really wollops you know. now. It used to be I'm sure a much less considerable well, I just sort of paid two hundred and ten pounds a day or something that yeah. came through, and it's just like every month, and it's Brutal. like. And as you say, there on. is no sense that anything is getting. No, better. the rubbish is getting worse. Potholes, yeah. everything with the council. Anyway, the other big story is children must not be rushed to transition. So this is the CAS report is finally coming out. Uh, the interim report came out last year, or, or uh, and but this is pretty damning and definitive, and really actually says what. 
what the critics of gender ideology have been saying for a long time is that these are children with mental health problems and just rushing them into transitioning with uh, chemicals, uh, with surgery is the wrong thing to do. A lot of them yeah. also have, like, they're neurodiverse or they've suffered from abuse. This is all self-evident. The, the evidence has been there for a long time, but finally it's out there. It's on the front page of the newspapers. It's yeah. in a government report and the madness hopefully will stop. And after so many careers have been finished for saying very simple things that now seem so very self-evident. I think that's fair. And, Lewis, just to polish this off very quickly, 20 seconds on the cows with the right hump, if you wouldn't mind. Oh, this is about cows. This is about camels providing milk. And uh, Boffin says that, that camels are going to provide milk. They're already providing milk in the Middle East to a lot of people. And the truth is, it's not going to be good for anything because cows do not fart. They, they, they burp. Me methane. Oh, this is the issue, is it? They think camels will be a less, uh, uh, less of a climate. And right, the okay. truth is, the vegan vegans, whatever they are, they uh, they hate humans messing with animals, and they're not going to be happy with cows kept on farms or camels. Yeah. yeah, camels kept on farms. I slept. I took a camel trek across the desert in Rajasthan about thirty years ago. The camels belched and farted their way through the night as much as any cow could conceivably have done. Mm, I have, mean, it may have been how less do they rich. taste? Do you know how they taste? May have been less enriched. Do I don't know tongue, that they do eat them. Do they? They got a tongue. That's how they taste. <laughs> <laughs> Well, on that uh, wonderfully archaic note, that is it for the front pages. Coming up, we have Honor on the Rise, but not in a good way, and Ofcom are finally given an opportunity to exonerate their shabby record with GB News. We'll see you shortly. This is GB News, Britain's news channel. Can the Church of England not spend their money as they wish? The Church of England can do amazing things for this country and for the world. And I'm not sure why it's chosen to focus on this specific issue. You know, one of the causes that I've always thought the church was very good at were things called almshouses, which were basically houses that would be built on church estates for the needy. Not only did they want to spend £100 million on this fund, but they wanted to spend £1 billion on reparations as well. Well, why not spend... 100 million or a billion pounds on a new generation of almshouses as opposed to just helping one group of people, black British people, why not just help all people in need? Alex? Well, I, I just don't understand what the Church of England is trying to do. It's on its deathbed. Congregations have, have reduced. Reduced. I mean, deathbed is maybe a I mean, well, <laughs> if we look over 20 years, it's dramatically lower than it used to be. And, and, and a lot of criticism from actual Christians come from the, the values that the Church of England are now propagating. And Justin Welby has a lot to answer for because, you know, not only are we seeing in the news this mass conversion of illegal immigrants to a gay mass system in the UK, but now we're seeing them spending money... And, and as Albie actually pointed out correctly, it, it, in, in, a, in a way that doesn't really benefit broader society, it benefits a very small group of people. So I, I just don't know where it's going to end. This committee has also said one billion is not enough. 100, it's 100 million, sorry. Um, it's, it, church commissioners are now hoping to, for a target of one billion. I mean, I mean it's, it's, a... it's woke nonsense, isn't it? You could make the argument that this is charity. Austin Welby's job is to be a virtue, should, virtue signaler, well, is it not? Should charity discriminate? I mean, that's what he's saying. We're only going to give this to people from a specific skin colour or background. I don't think that's it, it very Christian of them. I think the most exciting bit for me is talking to people. People who I think are ignored often by the major news channels. We're going to give news they want to hear. There's a voice there that needs to be heard. I think there's a chance here for a diversity of opinion to be expressed, which you don't find elsewhere. It's really exciting. We don't hold back. We're free to say how decisions that are taken here affect us all around the country. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Michelle Jubery, and I'm not here to tell you what to think. I'd much rather hear what you have to say. So, send in your opinions to gbviews at gbnews.com. Keep them clean, and you never know, I might read them out. With my panel here on Jubes & Co, we debate, we get stuck into the issues of the day on a show where all views are welcome, especially yours. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel.
now, welcome back to Headliners with me, Simon Evans, still with the top tier Jews, Josh Howie and Lewis Schaefer, two and a half Jews with the news tonight. So, Josh, bad news for fans of chivalry in the Daily Mail, as it seems honour is behind many of the very worst things that can happen in modern Britain. <laughs> yeah, a number of honour-based crimes being committed in Britain, including rape and forced marriage, surges by more than 60% in two years, figure suggests. Mm. Um, and uh, this is obviously we're talking about uh, Japanese... People. Well, it's honor, funny you said honor that. is deeply. I, I wrote. I read the entire article. I read it through twice in case mm. I've missed it the first time. The words Islam, Muslim, Islamic, anything of relation to that, not one mention of. Yes. Despite the fact that that's clearly what we're talking about here, and this is in the Daily Mail, which is not normally known for pussyfooting around mm. sensitive it's issues, nice. and yet has it been decided that this is to be treated as though it could conceivably transcend? R quasi religious cultural issues of this kind? Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's very straight. Yeah, it's gone up since 2016, 193%. Now they're saying it could be because more victims are coming forward, improved identification, or even they're talking about court backlogs. One thing they're not mentioning is um, my, migration. Imran Kodapakus, Imran Kodapakus, a director at the Family Law mm. Company told the newspaper that delays in family courts are part of the problem. Part, I don't maybe, think that's the problem. Yeah, I uh, think it's the people doing the raping and the killing that's the problem. That possibly could be the case, yes. What would you say about that, Lewis? I mean, well, I don't want I, it to become an entire consensus necessarily. I would say no, and I, I would say I'm not Jewish. Um, I I'm, I'm was raised... Both my parents were Italian, and I became Jewish for the sake of the comedy business. Okay. And I took a, it took a wrong turn. But... <laughs> What this is, what the bigger issue here is, should parents have control over their children? And that's the ultimate question. And the fact is, is that they've taken... I mean, obviously, we're What's against... the point of murdering them? You know what? My kids have been pretty bad. <laughs> and, and maybe they would be better behaved if they thought that a parent could... could could do well, that. we're talking about here for, re for, for wearing Western T-shirts, wearing a short T-shirt. Well, they, they weren't... I mean, up to a certain age... Parents should have responsibility okay. for their children. Well, we're talking also about adults being killed you know by what? their parents. Yeah, adults, uncles. and that's wrong. That sh totally should be so wrong. So you think after 18, you're allowed to kill your kid well, after maybe that. not 18, maybe 16, 15. I don't okay. know what I know you don't think, but we have an issue here. We have a cultural issue mm. of, um, of, of different ideas, of, you say, as to family systems and imported into a Western liberal democracy... And we are seeing people being murdered in this country. Yeah. That's wrong. That's yeah. an issue. And I we should be able to talk I, about it without accusations of Islamophobia you, or hatred. We should be, but I think you're the wrong guy to talk about it, as I'm the wrong guy to talk about it. But the truth is, there are people here who, who believe in this, and I, I'm going to have to defend some of it, whereas parents do not have control over their children, and obviously, they came from a country where parents did have control, and they're basically told here. This yeah, is but they didn't. No, but what that you're saying, like no honor killings happen back in the in the countries of origin. No, That's they the do. point. It's of an imported they, problem. But they, it, but they used to have honor killings in this country. They do have honor killings. What do you know? But they used to have honor killings among among whatever you call the people who lived here, the native English and the when? Welsh. When? When are you talking about? I'm talking about like like hundreds of years ago. Right. When, okay. When so yeah. People... So, so the issue is we have yeah. like when we used to have, like burn witches and stuff. You're yeah. Talking like, about that. Kind and do you like not think the society, like that. Western society, has progressed? I agree with that. I okay. agree with that. All right, Lewis. Thank you, Lewis. Uh, uh, I'll give you this story. This is, Donald... the worst, this is the worst show I've ever done. I think that maybe can, we may I be can... on track for that. <laughs> uh, Donald Trump <laughs> revisiting the scene of one of his most glorious or notorious outburst from his first term in yeah. This Is In The Telegraph. Well, and that wasn't true either. Donald Trump says, says he is for, oh, he's for all for immigrants so long as they come from nice countries. And, uh, and, and, and this, is, this, is, this is one of those things, I can't believe it. This is what they say to, about Donald Trump to depower him. It's, a, it's possibly a lie. He said something like, there are countries which are a disaster. He's not saying the people are a disaster, but he's saying we shouldn't let people come in from countries that do not follow the rule of law, and they might not follow the rule of law here. And, uh, and because it doesn't say that. It's not, it that's not, say, that's not a direct quote right at all. It's, but it says... It says we talk about Yemen, where they're blowing each other up yes, all over the place. Yes, where, where the country is out of control. That's just hey, a cultural hey, thing hey, in Yemen. 
It is Lewis. the cult. Well, no, they have, they've uh, they been have. at war for some time. I'm joking. They, I'm yeah. just yeah. Pretty, well, no, but you are joking. But on the other hand, we have just been talking about a cultural mm. thing which has created uh, issues in this country. Mm. So what is, the, what is the nature of it, in your view, Josh? Is he saying that we shouldn't regard immigration as a function of people escaping uh, failed states in their home? Mm. Or is he saying that we shouldn't regard immigration as being all, like, human capital is just interchangeable economic units? Instead, we should be honest about the fact that human beings are different. But, yeah, I think the latter, but what he's specifically saying in a, in, is, like, he says, like, we, why can't we get people from Denmark and Switzerland, mm. which I, I think his family are sort of Nordic. Scottish. So why can't we, yeah, why, why can't we have people like me coming over? Yeah. The irony is, of course, people from Switzerland, Denmark, probably don't want to go to America. They'd probably be like, oh, that place is a... Yeah, rubbish. they used to. I yeah. mean, that was a massive... Oh, yeah, back the, in the... The yeah, Scandinavian yeah. Back uh, in the was day, third yeah. only to German and English. But, yeah. but now they'd probably be like, we're pretty happy here, thank you. So mm. that's the thing about immigration, is you want to go somewhere where your life is going to be but this better. Is a, this is a slur on Donald Trump. Donald Trump... He's, he's, this he, is quote, he, he, quoting him. It is quoting him, but it's it's not quoting him what he re, what he means. What do you think he means? Then? Go on, paraphrase I he, him. I think he means what Josh says he means. <laughs> yeah. but he, when he was saying it, he did not mean that. What... I'll tell you what I think he means. Okay. I think he means that countries are downstream of the human beings that live in them and build them and yeah. make their institutions and their laws and their cultures and their traditions. And that if you allow, if you encourage the people who made the good countries to come and live in America, America will benefit from that. And if you allow the people who live in the countries whose cultures and industries and institutions yeah. are manifestly uh, a, a basket case, then your country is likely to be degraded by their presence. And um, I don't know whether people are, are confident or willing to state that they disagree with that in mm. principle or simply say that it's distasteful to say it out loud. Yeah. I think I, most I think you, I people in most you. countries in the world that attract any degree of immigration would say yeah. it was true. Well, we're, and yeah, what we're having now is countries in Europe, like, I think, Denmark, but yeah. also Sweden, who are now having very opposite conversations coming from the left, who originally brought over a lot of people, going, these are people in need, we should help them. Yeah. They came over, then crime and violent crime and rape have gone right, up, right. and now they're having these conversations going... OK, that, that was an issue. And whether, cool. we're, whether we're going to be having that conversation here, well, we're we having it in honesty, yeah. or whether it's going to progress to our politicians in honesty on the left as well, that's whether the Overton window is going to that move is, in that direction. That is the question, saying, isn't it? Whether, he's I mean... not saying downstream. He's saying upstream. He's saying the people are flowing from this horrible country into our country. No, no, you misunderstand what I meant by downstream, yeah. but never mind. Josh, uh, Guardian now, Albanians uh, can't live with them, can't live without them. We're on the same track here. Yeah, Albanians willing to be repatriated, uh, detained for weeks in the UK, watched off fine. So last year there was this landmark uh, joined communique uh, with Albania where basically we could just instantly send them back because it's a safe country. Yep. And that actually had a massive impact and they, it, it dropped the, their percentage of the boats dropped way, way down. Mm -hmm. uh, and so people, the idea is that, that when they are caught, when they get off the boat here, they, they would be sent to a centre and said, look, you're going to be sent back. The thing is, they've been waiting for weeks in these centres to actually be sent back. So even though they kind of opted and said, all right, fine... Like early retirement or voluntary redundancy. Yeah, they, so it's, yeah. Just, it's taking ages. Mm. There's also, they're complaining that when they're on a coach, that they uh, had the toilet open or someone had a foot in the door. Yeah. I think that's, uh, you know, you want to go to the toilet in privacy. We don't actually have that option here at GB News. No. We're stuck with other, other sections. <laughs> Lewis always watching. Uh, but, uh, but, yes, you think that after all of this, prob you know, issues have been gone through and yeah. crossing all that stuff, you'd, they'd go, all right, let's get them out quickly and, and Can stop we have, them um, money. Can we have... Just going to hurry you through yeah. on the last couple of stories of this section, but the um, Ofcom are investigating David Lammy's show yeah. in Lewis, which is um, an opportunity for schadenfreude, which I hope you'll resist. Well, it's not schadenfreude. I don't see any... I don't see any... Whatever that word means. It's... Uh, <laughs> it's uh, Ofcom launches <laughs> investigation into David Lammy's LBC show over alleged rule breach, which is David Lammy is a Labour Counts a Labour MP. MP, MP, and he's the shadow foreign secretary. It's hard to believe because David Cameron has basically take over, taken over his entire thing. But he's doing 
on LBC, what uh, Reese Mogg was doing with us yeah. is he was he had two, he had two jobs. He was a politician, and supposedly, according to Ofcom, you're not supposed to do that. Why is Ofcom in everyone's face? This has this is not about Schadenfreude. This is about Ofcom wanting to remain relevant and being in power, no matter who's in power. Okay. They want to well, actually, what it's about is. There's hypocrisy that was exposed here because the the the, the viol supposed um, violations that, that GB News had yep. with Jay Police Mogg, yeah. the other politicians have also been on other channels. In this case, David Lammy. So yeah. when people complain because there are people out there trying to shut down GB News. So I'm imagining here... Did say that, that? No, but what I imagine what happened here is a bunch of people, next time David Lammy did something similar, complained, and there was a couple of thousand complaints. Mm. And no, there uh, wasn't. There was only 51 complaints. Oh, is it, oh sorry, I'm reading about two. 50, How many complaints did I get for what I said about COVID? Anyway, the point... 151. The, well, you're, you're leading the... Well done. <laughs> uh, but... Uh, and that they went, oh, OK, yeah, fine. So there's, it's just... Hypocrisy was pointed out to them. It's what, whether that rule was. But you is know it, what is, it is? You guys are focused so much on like fairness and everything. Why should there be, with so many stations and so many news outlets, why should there be a government agency, part of Team World, watching over? Well, we have agreed, as GB News has agreed, and LBC mm. have agreed to abide by terms which allow us to be defined as a news channel. Why should we be forced in order for us to be on the air? Which we're not, but that's, that's, we're not. That's we not could be on the air and, and brand ourselves as a model railway channel, which also reports the and news. Would, You'd be allowed to would, do would it. You would... called a news channel, and there was the idea of people want to watch the channel in order to yeah. get an unbiased version of the news. It's, it's fine. It's understood that Lammy and Rhys Mogg and the likes of them can dispense comment, can host conversations, and can give their own views. But when they're actually reporting the news rather than comment, they are supposed That's... to step back and allow an But uh, are they reader. reporting the news? You should probably attend one of the Ofcom briefing <laughs> sessions and get <laughs> your head yeah, around this one before we lose sick, yet another sick. one of our bloody guests. <laughs> anyway, we're at the halfway point. Coming up, the Foreign Office oils that may soon be on eBay and the Catholic Church come out against trans. Only genderism, the substantiation stuff, is still real. We'll get the details in a couple of minutes. See you then. Good evening. Here's your latest GB News weather brought to you by the Met Office. Most of us will see some heavy rain and some strong winds as we go through tonight into tomorrow in association with a relatively deep area of low pressure. Now, this feature has been named by Meteo France because it's going to bring some impactful weather there. In the UK, it's not so stormy, but nonetheless, there'll be some strong winds, particularly around coastal parts, and also a spell of heavy rain feeding in across parts of northern England and across Scotland as we go through the early hours of Tuesday. Because of the blustery, wet and cloudy weather, temperatures for many of us aren't going to drop much, most places holding up in the mid to high single figures. So a relatively mild start tomorrow morning, but quite a cloudy and a wet one and a windy start for most of us. The heaviest rain will be across eastern parts of Scotland, could cause some problems, particularly on the roads. Also some heavy rain for northern England, but all of this does gradually clear away towards the northeast with something a bit drier following in behind, but also a scattering of showers. Now temperatures will be down several degrees compared to today, highs of just 13, perhaps even 14 Celsius towards the southeast. A chilly but bright start for many of us on Wednesday. However, the fine weather doesn't last. More wet weather is going to push its way in from the west and we're going to see wind strengthening again. And again, that rain could cause some problems, particularly particularly over southwestern parts of Scotland. At the moment, Thursday looks like a drier day for many of us, and that drier theme looks like it will continue into Friday across the south before more rain arrives further north. 2024, a battleground year. The year the nation decides. As the parties gear up their campaigns for the next general election. Who will be left standing when the British people make one of the biggest decisions of their lives? Who will rise? And who will fall? Let's find out together. For every moment, the highs, the lows, the twists and turns. We'll be with you for every step of this journey. In 2024, GB News is Britain's election channel. I'm Christopher Hope. And I'm Glory DiPiero, bringing you PMQ's live here on GB News. Whenever Parliament is in session on a Wednesday at midday, we'll bring you live coverage of Prime Minister's questions. We'll be asking our viewers and listeners to submit the questions that they would like to put to the Prime Minister. And we'll put that to our panel of top politicians in our Westminster studio. That's PMQ's live here on GB News, Britain's election channel. 
GB News is the home of free speech. We were created to champion it, and we deliver it day in, day out. Free speech allows us all to explore and debate openly the issues most important to us, our families, and of course, the British people. Having challenging conversations to enlighten each other. Which is why we hear all sides of the argument. We are the people's channel. We will always stand by the freedom to express yourself. On TV, radio, and online. This is GB News, Britain's news channel. And welcome back to Headliners. So we have the sun, Lewis. This is the sun in the morning and the moon at night. Yeah, you just go. Um, That's fine. Yeah. Fraudster. <laughs> is that what it is? Fraudster <laughs> behind BLM statue top. He wrote a link. He wrote a special link. Oh, did I interrupt it? Yeah. No, sorry, sorry. no. I I would just... You're so busy talking the entire show. It's all your show. It's, this, is a Louis, this is Louis Schaefer's world. I know you think it's not. It's my world. It's, my, it's not my world. Go on. I finished finish the joke. I'm sorry. I didn't. I wasn't paying attention really. I'm sitting there. Do you want to do it, mate? No. What do you want? What do you want to do? BLM statue. Go on. Okay. Here we go. Frauds. <laughs> <laughs> I said this is the worst show that I've ever done. Uh, you've got frauds. No, worse. I know I've done worse. I haven't done worse. Maybe I haven't. I'm waiting for you to say no, Lewis. You're amazing. Frauds are behind BLM statue toppling. Used seventy thousand pounds donations to fund lifestyle, but is ordered to pay back one. Pam, this is a 23-year-old girl, woman. Excuse me, her name is Sarah Salim. And uh, she was involved in the, in the thing that tore down the Colston statue, and she stole 70,000 pounds to, to takeaways and Ubers and Amazons. Mm. And uh, they made... Josh, it. do you want to have a crack at this? Well, yeah. Only, well, OK, she went to jail... I told the story! Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, she's gone to jail for two and a half years. Yeah. They basically said to her that you, she has no money, so they've said, you pay back a pound. It's really... It's quite a heinous crime because it took from this charity organisation. The organisation has had to close down since. Mm. And But they're saying that in the future... Uh, as and when she earns more money, then she may have to repay it. A bit like being a student. I think she shouldn't have to repay it. Mm. I think the people who gave that money were idiots mm. and they deserve that money to be frittered away onto nothing. I mean, I kind of think it's taught us all a valuable lesson and maybe a fairly affordable one, just £70,000, mm. is that these charities that spring up and, uh, and parasite on um, suddenly emergent, yeah. like... Uh, society, social justice movements. With no oversight. Yeah, exactly, which are obviously expressing as much a, a kind of general tantrum towards, you know, cosmic injustice than they are actually addressing anything yeah. that you can On say... On the other like, side of the world. Are chil yeah. These children are hungry or whatever. Yeah, exactly, you get I'm bitten. Not sure you get bitten. Yeah. I'm not sure it should be criminal. I think it should be a civil case. You know, you know, like... Well, for a pound, it probably is, virtually, no, but isn't it? why does the government, why does the state... Why does the government there? so that she and doesn't get burnt at the yeah, stake? Yeah, well, let it get burnt at the stake by... by Monopoly of violence. It's a fairly that's, basic principle. That's something else. OK, over to the Telegraph now, Josh, and they clearly aren't what they were. Happily repeating this kind of mealy-mouthed libel against the glories of empire. I'm referring to the Telegraph. Yeah, uh, yeah. what they were. Very good. Yeah. Uh, foreign Office should be less elitist with fewer colonial-era pictures. Mm. This is from the author's Lord Sebwell. He ran the civil service under Theresa May. And Moazan Malik, who was a former Foreign Office Director General. And I get very frustrated with these kind of reports, beyond just the content of them. And we had something in the news yesterday. Basically, when, when people leave... Then they're like, you know what? They should do it all differently, and they should not do this, and they should not. Do it's like, but when you actually worked there, you didn't do any of it. Mm. It's, it's... You think you could have attacked it like the woman with the um, with the painting, the Balfour painting. You should have gone at it with a standing knife. Well, just like, well, at least they were in the building at the time, or, or whatever. But I mean, the point is, they were in a position to actually do something about it. But now that they've they've got they've gone but and they've got do their you retirement. Think they should point. do. You've you've sort of accepted. You've sort of eluded the the argument. No, I don't know if they should actually do anything. No, but I I'm mean, just... there's a lo rather lovely picture of the Foreign Office, a room in the Foreign mm. Office. The Foreign Office is a large building. I suspect most of the people who work there work in fairly standard offices, but it's obviously got a nice couple of reception rooms. It looked a bit like the Garrick or something, do you know what I mean? Just yeah. big red leather sofas and a, a bloke with a big peacock feather hat, you know. I think that sort of thing's all right, isn't it's it? Not, and also, it's, like, it's a bit of history. They, they want to modernise it all. Like, this is what we've got is our history. That's, yeah. like, one of our best bits. Exactly. I would but... say sell tickets to it. That would be the thing to do. They have guided tours. Maybe move the actual work to Milton Keynes, like they're all, you know, been suggesting. Yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe upgrade from Windows 95. How I'll, do you I'll feel about that. colonial history, Lewis? Oh, I'm sorry, were you speaking to me? Yeah. I think, um... 
I think this is another example of people coming in and wanting to destroy Britain. And this is a team world story. They want to, they want to spend the, the, our money, their money, this country's money, tackling climate change and reparations for people who don't deserve it and all that other stuff. And mm. uh, the fact is, is that uh, it, it's just one more knife uh, into the, the heart. The chap I saw, Lord Sedwill, whose photograph is on the piece, he looked pretty, like... Uh... Lordy? Yeah, pretty old-fashioned aristocrat, uh -huh. foreign office kind of chap. He had the teeth and everything. You know? <laughs> I don't think he's come into this country. I think he's grown out of it like a turnip. But uh, anyway, I very much doubt anything will be done. Uh, more outrage at the Daily Mail. Uh, they have discovered the red pill analysis of sexual relationships. Lewis. Yeah, well, they did... They did this, yeah, outrage over controversial female, female privilege, quote-unquote female privilege, list drawn up by men's rights activists. And this is... Uh, and this was there was a TikTok, they had this list, which lists all these different things that show how much better it is to be a woman. And uh, it, said it is better to be it's a woman. It's convincing, isn't it? It is very <laughs> convincing. The problem is you're telling a woman this who believe... Women, women this, who don't believe that it's good to be well, a woman. Well, no, a woman found it on Reddit. I don't know that it was... It wasn't like being introduced into a female chat room It or wasn't. She found it, but... Mm. OK, so a woman should not hear this. We shouldn't be discussing this, because if you say what you... If you say that women have certain privileges, not all the privileges, they're not, they're not going to like. What do you think, Josh? Do you think yeah. it's... A, it, I mean, obviously, they, it's, a, it's intended to counterbalance some of the other arguments rather than... To yeah, be, she, to she kind of refutes it, and a yeah. lot of them are kind of ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, but one of them is really funny. Number eight is, it says, I can look at children for more than three seconds with no fear of being labelled a paedophile. Yeah. That's like... That's true. <laughs> and I don't know whether it's a male privilege or, or a female privilege that has led to virtually the entire... Faculty, for one of a better word, staff in like junior schools, infant mm. schools, schools for under 11s are all women. Yeah, primary. Now. Pri well, no, there all are women. some, and they weren't when I was a kid. There were men teaching us. Yeah. I've, we've had some men, male teachers at uh, uh, our school, yeah. but I just think it's funny that someone cared enough to yeah. write that down. I just really miss looking at kids, and it's so yeah. unfair that I have to. But how? What did the, <laughs> what did the woman say who was answering this? This CC woman. She said, "You're she a pedo." Says, <laughs> she, says, she says, "Why would you want to look at a child? Yeah, as if children are horrible." Here's a woman. But why are you in the park just staring yeah. at his whimsically? No, staring. All that guy He's needs, saying. he just needs to get a dog. Just get he a dog just, on the You kids. get to speak to loads but of people. But there is an interesting thing. Is also, 22 was uh, many places now hire preferentially or exclusively women. Yeah. And she says that's not true. You can't discriminate based on gender. In our industry, we do see uh, comics hired because of their gender, solely because of their gender. My agent certainly says that, that he gets uh, inquiries along those lines. We want to... So, yeah, so we, we need a female this act this and this. for this. I will also say, though, it's more historical analysis of society, isn't it? Because they are... He is, he is refuting the idea of the patriarchy being this kind of thing which, you know, despite our best attempts, still underpins society. And he says, well, historically speaking, only men were conscripted and forced to go to war. You know, millions of men died in war. Yes, sometimes women get, you know, uh, the run to that because they're left to bring up children alone. It's no fun either, but still, the men are dying. 96% of workplace deaths and fatalities occur um, among men. Almost always the children are given to the woman in a divorce. Almost always she gets a very beneficial uh, financial settlement. All that kind of stuff. Mm. That's fairly big, meaty stuff. She right? does, yeah, but she These does are not tweaking some of little it. kind of, oh, women, you know, always get served first on the, you know, on the aeroplane or whatever. Mm. It's, it's, it's fairly big structural stuff. But she does sort of counter some of those points and says, well, there's no conscription nowadays. Like, no. this is an American society. Women usually are the primary carers, which is why they yeah. might get. So there are, she does provide to be fair, some counterpoints. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think the saddest thing about being a woman, or the best thing about being a woman, I should say, is that you can sort of lie in bed and look at Lewis's calendar <laughs> and touch a... And by There's Lewis probably a, literally by a... dozens of them out there yeah. right now doing yeah. exactly that. The Daily Mail also have outrage at the Vatican, Josh, as yeah. the Pope discovers an inch of backbone in his dotage. Yeah, Vatican slams sex changes and gender ideology for hurting a person's unique dignity in rare Pope Francis boast, uh, boost to conservatives. It's a it's interesting phrasing this unique dignity. I can't I don't really understand how it fits in with theology, mm. but as we have seen um Catholicism sort of bending over backwards, uh, adapting to the modern world. That's not mm. necessarily wrong with that, but to take a stand in this matter, I think, is very important. Yeah. And uh, and there are men and there are women, and 
we should be able to say that, and that extends to religion. I think he's also saying, and this is what I thought was quite interesting, just as you say, in terms of theology, that there was a danger that anyone who felt that they could uh, change their sex, they were mm. essentially playing God. I mean, yes. he doesn't say playing God, but that you uh, that you interpose yourself in a, in a sort of... Uh, in a role that only God is, you yeah, know, has the right to dispose. Which is another way of saying being born in the wrong body. Yeah. Or what, you know, it, that that seems to be part of it. So, and so, so, the, the ego, and also it's not a, by coincidence that it's so much of this is like a youth movement, yeah. a youth fad, where your ego is out of control and you do think you're the centre of the universe. I think there's some truth to that. What do you think, Lewis? Agree. OK. Well, just the final section to go now. We talk about the marital benefits of booze, the decline of table manners and the healing power of touch. It sounds like a great night in. We'll see you in a couple of minutes. Britain's Newsroom. Weekday mornings from 9.30. Is it OK to call people fat? I won't call Bev fat, because she isn't. She <laughs> won't call me fat, because I'm not. But the fitness fanatic, Derek Evans, you might know him better, as 90s icon, Mr Motivator, recently told a podcast, diabetes have gone through the roof. You should be able to call people fat. Well, he joins us now. Good morning, Derek. Good morning. Good morning. Great to see you. So I think what you're getting you. at is this idea that we've become so polite about weight that we're ignoring the elephant in the room. Um, if you'll forgive the <laughs> forgive the phraseology there, and actually, sure. sometimes you've got to be cruel to be kind. Well, actually, you know, this has been taken out of all context. I actually didn't say you're entitled <laughs> to call people fat. What I did say is that in the 80s and 90s, I remember the way I got into television, there was a gentleman walking at reception while I was waiting for the people I was training. And for some reason, I got up and I prodded him in the belly. And I said to him, you need to deal with that. That was fat. We have a nation where obesity, diabetes is killing every one of us. Mm. And unless we take responsibility for our health, rather than waiting for government to do this, government to do that, it is our responsibility, right, to look after our independence and our health. And as we get older, it's even more critical, right? And that's why I'm here as an example saying to you, listen, I'm 71 years of age and movement is medicine. And you can't sit around watching television and not going out to the gym or wherever, you will never ever be able to look after your family and everything you've worked for, you will lose it. I've never seen a hearse, uh, sorry, a deposit account behind a hearse. Mm. I've ne no matter what you work for, the most important thing you can do with your life is every hour, do something active, every hour. I think the most exciting bit for me is talking to people. People who I think are ignored often by the major news channels, we're going to give news they want to hear. There's a voice there that needs to be heard. I think there's a chance here for a diversity of opinion to be expressed, which you don't find elsewhere. It's really exciting. We don't hold back. We're free to say how decisions that are taken here affect us all around the country. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Patrick Christie's. Every weeknight from nine, I bring you two hours of unmissable, explosive debate and headline-grabbing interviews. What impact has that had? We got death threats and the bomb threat and so on. Our job is to do what's in the best interest of our country. You made my argument for me. My guests and I tackle the issues that really matter with a sharp take on every story. I'm hearing up and down the country that was a beginning, not an end. Patrick Christie's tonight from 9 p.m. only on GB News, Britain's news channel. And welcome back to Headliners. So we have the Daily Mail now, Josh, with a story I distinctly recall the Daily Mash carrying seven years ago. Do they? Agree? OK, here's yeah. to us. Couples who drink together live longer and have better marriages, research suggests. So they uh, examined uh, question 4,500 married or cohabiting couples over two years. Uh, oh, I, uh, um, and, yeah, it turns out that if you drink together, you get on better, which mm. uh, uh, and uh, you live longer, and you and you get uh, and you have better marriages, and and if one person doesn't drink and one person does drink, that doesn't it doesn't work, and if both of you don't drink, 
then that doesn't work either. So you've basically got to both be drunk. I think there is... I mean, it's interesting, they didn't have a huge amount of statistical detail on this, just a no. general trend. Lewis, do you have any kind of experience what might be the appropriate level? Yeah, well, I, I don't know what the appropriate level is, but I see boozy couples and I envy them. And the reason, that, the reason they're happy together is because no matter how much they fight and hate each other, they go home and they're drunk and they have sex and everything's OK because they've had sex. And I think 90% of a marriage is just having sex when you don't want to have sex with somebody. And alcohol right. does that. And yeah. alcohol does it. It makes people look more attractive. It loosens up. It loosens up the loosens up the woman for their loser husband, or it loosens up the man. Loosens up the man for his wife, who's been belligerent and beat literally. Yeah, is that why your wife left? Do you think she wasn't <laughs> drunk enough? Do you want to know something? She had stopped drinking after she met me. Yeah, it could That's be. That's what it is. It could we be. Solved it. I would. Yeah, we solved it. That's the simple. And what about thing. Rose? Does she drink? Rose, who is that? Is that? Uh, is that I would I I should go out with a drug girl. <laughs> I don't. Well, I imagine that I you know, they're out there. There are plenty of people there. There is a um, your... don't mention my personal life, Josh. Okay, please. I apologize. There is a my, famous sorry, hockey sorry, stick. Sorry, Rose. There is a famous hockey stick uh, graph which demonstrates that drinking a little has all kinds of health benefits. People live a lot. Well, there's longer. a film, right? But it's just, yeah, what where they just top themselves and, up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's almost impossible to stay there. That's the trick. Okay. To have a drink a day is is better than not having one. Right. But it's so hard just to stay there. What about yeah, leaving Las was it leaving Las Vegas or something Las Vegas? Maybe you're talking about yeah. the Danish one, right? No, yeah, that's, that film, but I'm thinking about another yeah. film now, the yeah. one with Nicolas Cage where he gets drinks himself to death. That should be you should do that, Lewis. Yeah. Here, here's the point. I think uh, we don't know what the relationship between alcohol is to long marriages, and I don't think the story tells it. Lewis, the, uh, another small step for man here and another catastrophic decline for mankind. This is in the mail. This is the mail. Gen Z are ditching traditional table manners because they're irrelevant, and it means elbows back on the table. And this is a study that was done for a restaurant. I'm not going to mention the name, Pizza Express. And, uh, uh, and, uh, it's and not it, Pizza Express. It's not Pizza Express. Well, why should we give no, whatever right. the company? Good for you. Why should we give them the thing? But the... the it says that the young kids, they're leaning on the table, they're, they're on their phones doing the thing. It's not that they're ditching any, va any restaurant thing. It's just a generational thing. They never had it. But, but, but surprisingly, here's the thing, one point. Can I make one point? It says, it says that even though they say they're ditching it, most of them still follow it. It says that, uh, like, 46... Like, 54% s say you shouldn't take a call at the table while you're eating. Oh, right. Okay. Almost half of them. Over half. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Over to The Guardian now, Josh. It sounds like they're beginning to realise their standoffish ways may be doing them more harm than good. Yeah, touch can reduce pain, depression, anxiety, say researchers. The interesting thing is it's not just human touch, like robots even touching. So it could be in the future when we're cloned and we're raised by these kind of automatons, mm. that that'll be enough to give us emotional well-being. Uh, I don't know, with a little bit of haptic vibration at the fingertips? Possibly, possibly, but uh, it is uh, interesting that it, it doesn't have to be necessarily human, just... But it's one of the senses that's, like, the least explored right. and um, and supposedly has this, like, huge impact on, on our major world, yeah, yeah. and we don't really discuss it. Well, you know the no. story about the monkey and the milk and the rag, right, the fur? The monkey would no. rather hold on to the fur uh, than... Uh... Than, than hold on to the machine, the metal machine that gives it the milk. No, I didn't. You know, this year they I've did a yeah. behaviorist experiment where they have a monkey and it's uh, it's got like a, uh, a fake monkey mother that's got milk and uh -huh. is fur and the yeah. baby is happy. But if it's if those two elements are separated, one is giving it milk and the other is just furry, it will stay with the furry one all the time. And when it's really thirsty, it will kind of lean over and try and get oh, some milk. Right, so it wants, it wants I'm not, not going to shave myself. Though. It wants the best of both worlds. Yeah. This is one of those non-story stories. It's like non-story. It just says, basically, people want to be touched by people who love them. If, if they don't want to be touched by... Watch this. Watch this. <laughs> I don't want you to touch Suddenly me. Suddenly less yeah, Exactly, <laughs> exactly. But I thought you wanted to be touched according to this, this We study. just have one minute please now. Don't, please don't touch me. <laughs> just one minute where we can get through this next one, the antinatalist story in The Guardian, another mm. sound reason not to have children and instead adopt cats from Uzbekistan. Mm. Yeah, this is, this is another story, though. It's as if, you know, no kidding, Sherlock. Pregnancy may speed up... <laughs> Biological aging study finds. It says that every time somebody has a child, this is a study that was done in the Philippines. <laughs> this 
Let me touch my face. <laughs> I know people. People okay. That by that, that, that mothers age when they have children. Surprise, and, surprise. In the Philippines. In the that's Philippines. That's why you left her, right? And that men <laughs> and that men don't age. Yeah, that's pretty uh, pretty much the article. But whatever, they aim by about like two months or something. Two three months. I mean, yeah. it's like yeah. trivial, right? Compared to what having children is going to do for the rest kids, of your life. How many kids you have? Not oh, to yeah, women. Men. Not to women. It's not trivial to Do you win. feel like The Guardian wants people to stop having kids? Well, as I call it, the death of love. Yeah, that's the answer to the whole so? thing. They don't want it. They're... Ah, well, the show is nearly over. Let's take another quick look at Tuesday's front pages. The Daily Mail record surge in £150,000 council fat cats. That salary it's talking about, I think. Telegraph, children must not be rushed to transition. The Guardian, Starmer told to resurrect Sure Start to help the poorest. The Times, Labour set to close non-DOM loopholes. Uh, the Express have NHS must end long, cruel journeys for cancer care. And finally, the Daily Star, boffs give cows the right hump. Look forward to milking camels. Those were your front pages. That is all we have time for. Thank you to my guests, Josh Howie and Lewis Schaefer. We'll be back tomorrow Bye. at 11pm with uh, Leo Kirst and Damien Slash. If you're watching at 5am, stay tuned for breakfast. Otherwise, thank you. Good night. Warm feeling inside from Boxed Boilers, sponsors of weather on GB News. Good evening. Here's your latest GB News weather brought to you by the Met Office. Most of us will see some heavy rain and some strong winds as we go through tonight into tomorrow in association with a relatively deep area of low pressure. Now, this feature has been named by Meteo France because it's going to bring some impactful weather there. In the UK, it's not so stormy, but nonetheless, there'll be some strong winds, particularly around coastal parts, and also a spell of heavy rain feeding in across parts of northern England and across Scotland as we go through the early hours of Tuesday. Because of the blustery, wet and cloudy weather, temperatures for many of us aren't going to drop much. Most places holding up in the mid to high single figures. So a relatively mild start tomorrow morning, but quite a cloudy and a wet one and a windy start for most of us. The heaviest rain will be across eastern parts of Scotland. Could cause some problems, particularly on the roads. Also some heavy rain for northern England, but all of this does gradually clear away towards the northeast with something a bit drier following in behind, but also a scattering of showers. Now temperatures will be down several degrees compared to today, highs of just 13, perhaps even 14 Celsius towards the southeast. A chilly but bright start for many of us on Wednesday. However, the fine weather doesn't last. More wet weather is going to push its way in from the west and we're going to see wind strengthening again. And again, that rain could cause some problems, particularly over southwestern parts of Scotland. At the moment, Thursday looks like a drier day for many of us, and that drier theme looks like it will continue into Friday across the south before more rain arrives further north. A brighter outlook with Box Solar, sponsors of weather on GB News. This is your chance to win our biggest prize of the year so far. First, there's a totally tax-free £10,000 in cash for you to spend this summer. Then we want to send you on a bespoke seven-night small boat cruise for two worth £10,000. Thanks to Variety Cruises, you'll be able to choose from any of their 2025 Greek adventures and discover Greece like never before. And with flights, meals, drinks and excursions included, all you have to do is relax. We'll also give you these terrific travel treats for another chance to win a prize worth over £20,000, text PRIZE to 63232. Text costs £2 plus one standard network rate message. Or post your name and number to GB04 PO Box 8690 Derby DE1 9 UK only. Entrance must be 18 or over. Lines close at 5pm on the 26th of April. Full terms and privacy notice at gbnews.com forward slash win. Please check the closing time if listening or watching on demand. Good luck. 2024, a battleground year. The year the nation decides. As the parties gear up their campaigns for the next general election. Who will be left standing when the British people make one of the biggest decisions of their lives? Who will rise? And who will fall? Let's find out together. For every moment, the highs, the lows, the twists and turns. We'll be with you for every step of this journey. In 2024, GB News is Britain's election channel. I'm Michelle Jubry, and I'm not here to tell you what to think. 
I'd much rather hear what you have to say. So, send in your opinions to gbviews at gbnews.com. Keep them clean, and you never know, I might read them out. With my panel here on Jubes & Co, we debate, we get stuck into the issues of the day on a show where all views are welcome, especially yours. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Christopher Hope. And I'm Glory DiPiero, bringing you PMQ's live here on GB News. Whenever Parliament is in session on a Wednesday at midday, we'll bring you live coverage of Prime Minister's questions. We'll be asking our viewers and listeners to submit the questions that they would like to put to the Prime Minister. And we'll put that to our panel of top politicians in our Westminster studio. That's PMQ's live here on GB News, Britain's election channel. Good afternoon, Britain. Good afternoon, Britain. Weekdays from midday, we bring you the most compelling stories from across the United Kingdom. And why it matters to you. From your doorstep to our inbox. That's right, we want to hear from you. Good afternoon, Britain. Only on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Martin Daubney. This is GB News, Britain's news channel. Good evening. We will show you the total solar eclipse live from Mexico within the next hour. Only one in four Muslims in Britain say Hamas were guilty on October the 7th of those atrocities. I find that really quite extraordinary. And William Ragg has been in the news, the victim, apparently, of a honey trap. I will tell you why I do not believe William Ragg to be a victim at all. Frankly, just an idiot and probably quite a dangerous one. But before all of that, let's get the news with Polly Middlehurst. Nigel, thanks very much indeed, and good evening to you. Well, the top story from the GB Newsroom tonight is that West Yorkshire police have confirmed that a nationwide manhunt is now underway for a man wanted in connection with the murder of a woman in Bradford, and they confirmed at a press conference this afternoon the suspect is known to them. 25-year-old Habibur Masoum came to Britain on a student visa and is believed to be from the Oldham area. He's described as an Asian man of slim build. Police want to speak to any taxi drivers in the Bradford area who may have driven the suspect to Bradford Moor Park. He's likely, police say, to have paid in cash. People are also being warned not to approach the suspect. Meanwhile, the killers of 23-year-old footballer Cody Fisher have been jailed for life today with minimum terms to serve of 26 and 25 years, respectively. The semi-professional footballer was stabbed and killed during a fight on the dance floor of a Birmingham nightclub on Boxing Day in 2022. A jury at Birmingham Crown Court found 23-year-old Remy Gordon and 22-year-old Cammy Carpenter guilty of his murder. Cody Fisher's mum, Tracy, said, you never expect your child to be murdered. Well, in other news today, 11 people have been arrested following a pro-Palestine protest at the Labour Party's headquarters. The group, known as Youth Demand, sprayed both the inside and outside of the building in red paint. The protesters are claiming the party are complicit in what they've described as the murder of Palestinians in Israel's conflict with the Hamas terror group. That's after Sakir Starmer reiterated his call just this morning for the government to publish its advice on whether Israel is violating international humanitarian law in Gaza. Meanwhile, a new poll has found that 74% of British Muslims would not object if abortion was outlawed. A survey of 1,000 British Muslims carried out by JL Partners also found that just 28% would object if homosexuality was banned. Homosexuality was decriminalised in 1967 and is currently supported by 62% of the general public. The research was commissioned by the Henry Jackson Society, which says the results reveal attitudes are very different from the bulk of the British population. 
And in the United States, Donald Trump says that a woman's right to abortion should be decided on a state-by-state -state basis. Polls show the majority of Americans believe terminating a pregnancy should be legal, with about one in eight voters saying it's the most important issue for them at the next US election. Well, the former president, who's running again this year, said the overturning of the historic Roe v. Wade ruling actually means choice is returning to the American people. Many states will be different. Many will have a different number of weeks, or some will have more conservative than others, and that's what they will be. At the end of the day, this is all about the will of the people. You must follow your heart or, in many cases, your religion or your faith. Like Ronald Reagan, I am strongly in favor of exceptions for rape, incest, and life of the mother. Donald Trump. For the latest stories, do sign up to GB News Alerts. Scan the QR code on your screen or go to gbnews.com slash alerts. Good evening. Well, the last total eclipse here in the UK was back in 1999 as people headed down to Cornwall in vast numbers and Sir Patrick Moore was on the telly. And, of course, typically it was wet and windy and cloudy. But these eclipses are phenomenal events and there is one happening right now uh, and it's going up from Mexico through North America uh, and we thought we'd show you it live. So I'm joined right now by Dr David Whitehouse, astronomer and biographer on the sun and the moon. Who better? Uh, David, we're about three minutes away, I think, in Mexico from totality. Yes, we are. This is the moment when Remarkably, the disk of the moon fits precisely over the disk of the sun. And if you think that, that they're so different in distance and they're so different in size, it is a remarkable coincidence that they fit over one another and the moon